Thank you. Good morning. Um, I would like, first of all, to express my gratitude for invitation and possibility to be here. So it was very interesting to hear the first presentations, and now I would like to invite you to travel to Lithuania and to see. Okay. Okay, it's moving. Perfect. To see how migration patterns had changed, uh, have changed in Lithuania since the uh, independence restoration in 1991, what challenges we have faced, and how we have responded to them. So, um, in its history, Lithuania has experienced uh, various phases of migration. In three decades since the formal restoration of independence in 1991, Emigration has been the dominant migration pattern in the country. Since then, the number of residents living in the country has dropped by about 24%. It was mainly because of people leaving the country and less people coming to it. However, this trend has changed in recent years. And uh, as you can see also in the slide, the number of emigration um, has started to decrease while the number of immigrants coming to the country started to in increase. For the first time in 28 years, Lithuanians' resident population, population slightly increased only in 2019, and it was mainly due to the positive net migration of foreign citizens. So how many foreigners live in Lithuania? Compared to 2004, when Lithuania formally joined the EU, the number of foreigners residing in Lithuania has more than doubled, and their share in the population has almost tripled. At the beginning of 2021, uh, the share of foreign nationals, both non-EU nationals and also EU nationals in Lithuania, constituted more than 3% of all Lithuanian residents. However, today I would like to talk more about the immigration. So, um, again, here's a very interesting fact that uh, in the period of 2004 and uh, 2016, immigration flows to Lithuania consisted mainly of the returning Lithuanians. Of course, depending on the year, but approximately they constituted about 80% of all immigrants in the country. So again, this trend started to change in 2017, and the most provisional data uh, show that Lithuanians accounted half uh, of the total number of immigrants in 2019, and if we are looking into the latest data, we already can see this is the first time from 2004 that foreign nationals coming to the country um, the numbers are outnumbered and numbered uh, uh, Lithuanian citizens returning back home. So in 2020, uh, third country nationals who arrived to the country constituted about 49% 40, of the total number of immigrants um, in the country, while Lithuanians constituted about 48. So the difference is very low, but still we already can see the different uh, differentiations. It's very interesting will be to see how these trends are changing this year, because I think that pandemic situation still have uh, some impact for, for these trends. Even though for 2020, it seems that the situation just um, looking from the immigration side just improved. So who is immigrating to Lithuania? We're talking about the uh, foreign nationals. So majority of them are non-EU citizens. Uh, mostly coming from Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine. Um, I think that this trend uh, has not changed since 1991. Uh, people from the former Soviet Union mostly moved to, to the country, and it's related with some uh, close uh, historical, language, religion factors as well. So in 2020, citizens of mentioned countries, Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine, constituted almost 40% of the total number of foreign citizens who immigrated to the country that year. If we are looking a bit deeper to the sociodemographic uh, picture of migrants in Lithuania, we can say that it is mainly single male migrants who are uh, between 20 and 39 years old. 
Um, in the last five years, employment has been the main reason for issuing and extending temporary residence permits, whereas it was family unification in most of the period from 2005 to 2015. What happened? In 2018, the admission of migrant workers who work in a shortage of occupations was facilitated. And subsequently, the share of temporary residence permits issued for employment uh, increased. It's also important to mention that um, currently, um, labor migrants also can uh, receive a national visa, which is uh, issued for one year, of course, with the possibility of extension. Um, and here we can see again that the numbers are even higher. For instance, in 2020, um, more than uh, 38,000 people received such national visa for employment reasons, and comparing to 2016, the number even doubled. If we are looking into another picture of beneficiaries of international protection in Lithuania, asylum has played uh, the minor role of, in Lithuania, of course with the exception of 2015 due to the so-called migration crisis. Uh, in the period of 2004 and 2018, the annual number of lodge asylum applications ranged between 400 and 650. And in total, if we are looking from the really beginning, uh, then the FENU ratified the Geneva Convention in 1997. In total, around 800 asylum seekers have been granted refugee status, and more than 2,700 uh, the status of subsidiary protection. In 2015, Lithuania, as other EU member states, uh, joined European Commission Emergency Relocation Scheme to take uh, in refugees from Italy, Greece, and other EU member states that, um, that have uh, confronted the massive um, arrival of asylum seekers. And in the period of 2016 and 2020, of around 500 uh, people we are relocated in Lithuania, and the majority of them we are citizens of Syria. If we are looking into the citizenship of asylum seekers, we can see that majority of them, this is the data from 2020, are from Belarus, Russia, and Tajikistan. While if we are looking into the citizenship of beneficiaries of refugee status, because now this is the main status that most of people receive, so this is uh, um, people from Russia, Turkey, and Tajikistan. However, I cannot mention what's happened this year and summer 2021 because it's really very important and probably will change the picture of our country talking about migration in general and for the future. So uh, what's happened? Very briefly to tell, uh, tell you if anybody doesn't know, uh, now Lithuania faces a huge uh, numbers of regular migrants um, due to the uh, due to the um, sanctions, when the sanctions uh, were imposed on the government officials in Belarus, um, following the criticism of Lukashenko and expressing support for Belarusian. So after all this, at the beginning of uh, more or less springtime, we noticed that the numbers of illegal migrants started to increase. And as you can see in the slide that uh, follow from January 2021, uh, more than 4,000 people we are allowed in, and uh, I just can say that in 2020 we have like more than 80 people who were crossed the border regular. So you can imagine how, uh, what the challenges are for the country, talking both from the financial and also human resources uh, side. If we're looking into the picture, who uh, are those migrants? Well, majority of them are citizens from Iraq, around 67%. 29% uh, of them are women, and 26% are minors. You may ask what happened, okay, I'm sorry, it's not very clear in this picture, in the slide, but uh, what's happened um, uh, in August, because if until the August, the numbers were more or less increasing, and after the beginning of August, we suddenly, uh, uh, at least we did not detain so many migrants. So it happened that uh, the, 
the massive uh, expulsion was uh, adopted, so it means that now uh, pushbacks are legal in the country. So, uh, in general, um, asylum procedure is more or less impossible in, in the country. So, what uh, you are allowed to apply asylum only in a certain uh, border crossing points or in the embassies. But in the embassies, you have to have like documents. For instance, you can apply um, asylum in Minsk, but um, majority of migrants do not have any documents, and that's complicate uh, their um, possibilities to to receive um, uh, to receive uh, at least to apply for asylum. Uh, due to the saving, some, <laughs> saving time, I won't go very deep. If we want, we can, of course, have some talks uh, during the coffee breaks uh, about this issue. But um, in general, we can see also from the numbers that uh, now we have like a, a huge numbers of asylum applications which are still pending. And um, I think that uh, also that uh, difficulties of applying asylum it also shows from the numbers how many people in general uh, grants asylum because uh, Lithuanian's position and strategy in this uh, side is to, uh, in this topic, is to return um, those who came to the country as much as possible. Okay, so going back to in general about migration and migrant integration policy in Lithuania, um, in this slide you can see major migration policy developments from 2014. Um, why it is from 2014, I would like to emphasize that, of course, we have some developments before, but uh, still, in, in migration and integration policies only started to move beyond ad hoc principles in 2014 when the Lithuanian Migration Policy Guidelines uh, entered into force, and uh, the Minister of Social Security and Labor was instructed to draft a policy on the integration of foreign nationals. But it is also important to mention uh, that uh, resolution of the government of the Republic of Lithuania on providing state support for integration for asylum beneficiaries, which was adopted in 2016. But it is what is very important, probably not the um, not this document that was adopted in 2016, but uh, its amendments uh, adopted in 2020. And it is important because in this document, integration is uh, called as two-way process, that the responsibility for integration is not only from the part of the migrants themselves, but also from the whole society. And also a very important document was adopted in 2018. This is the uh, consequent um, action plan on migrants integration and why it is important because in this action plan we have separate measures for migrants in general and also directly for beneficiaries of international protection. Uh, we also do have a strategy for demography, migration and integration which is for, for the period of 2018 uh, to 2030. But uh, this document has really um, a lot of um, discussion because it mainly focuses on the Lithuanian returnees, has very um, just few measures related to the migrants, and no um, any measures um, on asylum uh, seekers and beneficiaries of international protection. In the previous presentation, uh, we saw how Finland uh, looks on my text 2020. So we can see that in the uh, Lithuanian side, we have very opposite situation. Like despite my mentioned uh, relevant migration policy developments um, since uh, 2004, uh, and all the amendments of legal acts that we had, my text 2020 results reveal that uh, Lithuania's score is lower, lower than the average migrant country uh, score, which is 50 out of 100, which means that Lithuanian's integration policies create more obstacles than opportunities for integration, and Lithuanian's approach to integration is classified by MIPEX as equality on paper. And if we are looking into the all EU member states, we can see that Lithuania, the Latvia, is at the bottom of, uh, of the list. So um, I would like to conclude that uh, the policies that we currently have encourage uh, the public to see migrants as strangers instead of as we are equals. 
and it was mentioned also in Birgit's uh, presentation, but it is very important to have a relationship with, um, with migrants in order to have uh, op uh, some positive opinions uh, uh, towards them. So what we can see, for instance, from this slide, um, Institute for Ethnic Studies um, in, in Lithuania conducts public opinion polls since 2005, uh, and we measure also the social distance, which is just one of the questions. And as you can see, that uh, one of the questions is which of the mentioned groups you would not like to have as neighbors. And uh, we can see, uh, comparing with 2020, uh, um, attitudes towards refugees um, became more negative, even more uh, for 20 percent, which is really a lot, and I think it's very much related with the public narrative that we hear about the migrants and especially refugees uh, in recent days from the policymakers, from mass media, and in general. So um, I would like to finish um, saying that um, as um, international studies reveal that uh, in Lithuania, despite all relevant uh, developments in migration and migrant integration policy um, during the last years, there is still a lot to do with uh, regard to the implementation of comprehensive migration policy that encompasses a long-term integration of foreign citizens. It's very important to talk about the strategic approach of integration. And recent developments also show that uh, Lithuanian's migration policy remain highly selective as it continues to favor return migration of Lithuanian citizens, also uh, quite selective of certain groups of migrants, especially, of course, for highly skilled migrants and even from particular countries, while, for instance, for some groups of migrants, for labor migrants, now we have some uh, quotas in, from migrants who are coming from Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. And restrictive policies like Lithuanians can create some kind of like a vicious um, circle of exclusion that reinforces fear and separation. And as I mentioned, that policies that treat migrants uh, as threats lead more people to see migrants as general threats and treat them uh, in ways that harm integration. So it is very, le very relevant um, to have higher inclusion of foreign nationals both into the political, social, and cultural life. And here I will stop. Looking forward for the questions and for the discussion. Thank you.